Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, and this is the Tips and Tricks Guide for Baikin in Guilty Gear Strive. Now, Baikin, very highly anticipated character, lots of people want to play her. So, the purpose of this video is just to give you a heads up on the character, a lot of what she can do, from very basic stuff to more advanced concepts Danger. and all points in between. Now, as always, these styles of guides, well, they're long videos. I'm not going to lie to you, right? They're pretty long. So there is timestamps everywhere in the video. So use the timestamps to skip forward to whatever makes sense for you, right? That said, we're going to cover as much as we can here. So let's, as always, start with the basics and let's cover her move set. Now, as far as the move set goes, before we even get to the special move, she does have quite a few command normals. First being forward kick. So this is a big advancing normal. It's not that negative at all on block. And also if you chain it from a lot of moves, one, it's a natural combo and also easily frame traps people. So if they try to mash buttons in between the first hit and the second hit, they'll get hit by the boot. Its main use is basically fishing for the counter hits. And also it is one of the few buttons you can get the combo naturally from a lot of your weaker buttons. So stand punch, stand kick, that kind of stuff, all natural combos. The other unique command normal of note is six HS, forward and heavy slash, this guy here. As you can see, the screen shakes when you do it, so it's kind of a big deal, right? So two things to note. If it hits as a counter hit, you will get the big boy counter hit. It'll bounce them. You can get all sorts of combos. Here's a quick example. So, good chunk of change on the damage, right? That's certainly not nothing, as you can see. So, that's really good. The counter hit is awesome, right? And also, it has what we call a disjointed hitbox. So, the part where you can hit Biken is actually a little bit behind the sword. So, you can kind of hit with the tip of this move in a position where the enemy might not be able to hit you. So, if you're fishing for counter pokes, all that kind of stuff, it's good for that. Also, it's really good combo fodder as well. On to the special moves here. We have her iconic Tatami Mat. So it's quarter circle forward and kick. As you see here, right before the move happens, just there's a mat on the floor and she kicks it up. And well, if you're there to be hit by it, it'll land on your face. And if you're a bit closer, it'll actually pop you up. This move is the backbone of a lot of her combo structure from the smaller stuff to some of the bigger stuff. Either way, you're gonna be using it, right? Actually has some very unique properties as well, which we'll talk about in its own section. And the move is indeed air okay. So the move is active all the way till it touches the ground or touches the enemy. So if you want to play like keep away and just like run away with the move and the enemy's chasing after you, they can very well just run into it and just get smacked in the face. So this is her ability to control the screen because once again, if any part touches, it smacks the enemy. So for combo structure, for screen control, very important. We have the Kabari. So this is half circle forward slash or heavy slash. Now, normally in a lot of fighting games, a different button just means like a different strength move or something. This is actually two different moves. They very similar in function in that, you know, they reach across and hit the enemy, yes. But the slash version is the tether. So if this connects on hit or on block, you can see kind of this rope ties you guys together we'll go more into it in its own section but this is a very important bar to biking because it allows for so much uh basic long story short though is when the rope's up you guys are stuck together now that's the slash version the heavy slash version is a big iron claw that just brings you in also has a follow-up so if you hit heavy slash again biking will charge forward with her sword you can also hold the follow-up and then just dash forward and the dash forward also can cross through the enemy. So this is gonna be a lot of combo enders. Also the move in and of itself has pretty sizable and substantial range. So it could be used very well as a poke. You're gonna see a lot of this move. Next up we have Yozansen. So Yozansen is an air only move. You cannot do it on the ground. Although you can do it really low to the ground. That'll be its own section. So while you're in the air, quarter circle forward and slash. And it's this giant, huge circular motion 
And it's to your benefit very much because the circular motion hits all the way around, especially a 360. So it sure enough can hit in the front and it can also hit in the back. So this is uh, basically the core of her mix-up game. And we'll be talking a lot about it later in the video. Uh, it's all right for some basic combo structure as well. But yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of the move. Quarter circle forward and punch. That's this guy here. So this is her counter stance and it's a pretty good one as far as counters go as it catches everything. So we saw right there, that's a jumping attack, right? So very obviously enough, counter size. If you're looking for mids or something like that, well, counters mids just fine as well. And yes, counters lows. So counters highs, mid, lows, and it happens the frame you hit the button. Now it's not active for a very long time, so you can very easily do it a bit too early. So you have to wait for the right moment and right time. But uh, as far as a counter goes in fighting games in general, being able to catch every possible height of attack and at frame one, meaning a lot of setups don't work on you. And the fact that it's a pretty big dunk with fairly significant damage, it's a really good counter. Now she had a lot of counter stuff in older games, and it kind of all got simplified into this one singular counter, but this one singular counter is a hell of a counter. Baiken also has two super moves. So the first one is double corticle forward and slash and very beautifully animated. This looks nice all around, big old sword slash. So good enough for ending combos if you think you can get the kill or get the wall break. The big thing here is this is her best reversal. So we talked about the counter. That's all well and good, right? But the thing is the counter can only get strikes. So like physical attacks. It can't stop projectiles and it very importantly in this game, especially cannot stop throws. So the thing is if someone's gonna attack you, right? And you don't know if it's gonna be a throw or a regular attack. This is what works. So this is basically your panic button as it's full invincible to every possible attack in the game, not just strikes like the counter works against, right? So if you just feel pressure and you want your get off me button, this move is it on top of being a pretty decent combo ender. We also have quarter circle back, quarter circle back punch, which is our GAT. This is our fireworks projectile. It's a fireworks launcher and shoots a big fireworks shell and blows up beautifully. Also, air okay. If you do it in the air though, it'll always shoot in a 45 degree downwards angle. So there's a few notes about it. One, it does OTG, meaning off the ground. So it can hit grounded enemies, both the regular version and the air version, just so you know. So there's situations where maybe they're too far away for say the uh, slash super, but the gun super can still get them. Also, the projectile is wicked quick. So it actually lets you punish slower things from full screen you otherwise wouldn't dream of being able to do. So Kai. The big old fireball, right? Like normally, okay, whatever. Like you can start moving in response to it maybe or get ready to block it, gain some space, but you can't just punch them from full screen. With this, you totally can. It destroys projectiles all the way through. And uh, a lot of projectiles, a lot of people have recovery after the fact, right? They don't just get the block right after throwing it. So if you catch them doing this, you can on reaction blow them up for it. You gotta be a little quick on the draw, right? Like you can't be too slow. If you're a little too slow, he will be able to block, right? There, you didn't see the counter, right? But if you're anticipating something like this, you're like any fireball, it doesn't matter what it is, if you just see the startup of it, you can just bring out the fireworks and you will get them. All right, so now that we've gone over the basics of the moves, we gotta talk like perhaps one of the most, if not the most core mechanic of the character in this version of the game anyways, and that's the rope. So the rope can be applied by a basic throw. This is where you're gonna see it most of the time. A basic throw or off her slash version of Kabari. So that's half circle forward slash. Either way, it applies the rope. And what is the rope? Well, the rope says when the rope is attached, it doesn't matter who it is, you can only go this set amount of distance. So as you can see, I cannot move any further backwards. If I try to move further backwards, say like back action or whatever, I'm just ripped all the way back in. Say I jump straight up after the throw, it still brings me in because I've gone past the point of no return, I guess you could call it. And then it tried to just rip me back in. I am doing nothing but going straight up. I am not going forward. If I go backwards, well then even more pronounced, right? So it'll do its damnedest to bring you in no matter what. And that's 
very key, both for combos, as a lot of combos will involve you using the rope, and for setups and pressure, as a lot of setups, pressure, gimmicks, everything come from the rope. Like, to give a very basic example here, so our Yozansen move, right? So a big full circular move, and if you hit the enemy with a cross-up, it bonks them and they just go flying. But if you hit them with the cross-up, now they go flying, sure, but they're ripped back in. So before, like if you you could Roman cancel whatever get Roman cancel combo, sure. But if you just left it as is, you're getting exactly nothing, basically, right? But now, say you have that rope attached, right? Well, the rewards can get a lot more uh, profound, as you can see here. So that would not have been possible without the help of the rope. And now we have the rope, we can do it. So it's super key. So there'll be segments in this video where we're gonna talk about like specific mix-ups and stuff. But at the bare minimum, just remember this. When you got the rope, you're locked in with each other, and there's nothing you can really do about it until the rope goes away. And keep in mind, if the enemy hits you while the rope is up, it does not go away. So if you got nothing planned, they can take big advantage and also get specific rope combos on you, which are much damaging, much more damaging rather, than their normal combos. So if they'd done their studying, you're in for a bad time. So make sure every time you have a rope applied, you have a plan. Now that's set on the rope. The throw. So the throw is the main way once again to apply the rope. If you hold throw, you do not apply the rope. As you can see there, right? So if you just don't want to deal with it, you don't trust yourself, whatever, you will instead do this. You just give them the boot, toss them, that's it. As you can see here, with the rope version, they're much closer. Without the rope and you hold the button, they are much further away. So the option is always there. However, for Kabari, if you do this move, the rope's always attached no matter what. So keep it in mind. But that said, that's the absolute basics of the rope. And we'll talk more about some of the tricks later on in the video. So now before we get into the weeds with a lot of the specifics and you know, gimmicks and tricks and all that kind of stuff, what's Spiken all about? What's her basic game plan? If I had to phrase it in any one specific way, Baiken, for the most part, would be a neutral control character because she has a lot of tools to do so. She has good and very workable buttons, maybe not best in class, but they don't need to be because you also add Tommy mats, which control space very well and are somewhat mildly difficult to get around. Uh, either the air version or the ground version can just shut down an opposing opponent very easily if they're just trying to rush in all the time. She's one of the few characters that does not have to submit to pressure when it's thrown in her face because the counter is a frame one reversal. So that puts her in the exclusive club with you know other reversal havers because honestly, not too many characters in this game get meterless reversals. Usually, you know, they gotta spend some kind of meter. Biken is not in that group. She can just deal with regular strikes whenever she wants as long as you have the right read. Because, of course, if you whiff this and nothing happens, uh, you're going to get smacked in the face. Keeping with the neutral stuff, her jump slash especially is a titanic normal for just a regular jump. Uh, not, uh, not comparable to Axel, I guess, right? But still, uh, just for just basic screen control, it's really good. And you add that with like the fact that combos from Yuzansen, all that kind of stuff, that's really good. You get a straight counter hit, you get some pretty respectable damage in your conversions. It's just really good. So her ability to just hang in the screen overall is pretty decent. And of course, the pressure. She is effectively, uh, especially so once you have meter for Roman cancel, an unblockable character. She'll be in your face and then block, doesn't really matter. Like it could be block stand kick, it could be block stand slash, anything you can jump cancel. And then from there, you either you guess low or you guess high. And that's completely unseeable. You, you're you basically just going to kind of have to flip a coin. So her mix, when she has meter, because once you do his on you're going to do Roman cancel combos, all that kind of stuff, right? And if it gets blocked, yeah, it gets blocked. It's completely safe because the Roman cancel. Thanks, right? It's really good. And, of course, you know, she gets the cross-ups, all that kind of stuff, too. That's really good. Um, when she throws you, you have the tether, and she gets mix-ups and 50-50s from this. So... That's pretty nuts, honestly. That's really, really strong. She has a lot. So her ability to just sit in neutral is pretty good. Her ability to pressure is pretty good. So 
other than like you know long range combat this is like the one thing she can't do she's a really just good all-arounder for the most part and should be played as such so now let's talk notable normals as she's got a decent amount now they're pretty much all in the footsie slash neutral department but once again other than the pressure and mix-up stuff that's where she excels so first stand slash it's as basic as basic gets right but the thing is it's quick 10 frames a lot of you know kind of basic footsies normals like this for a lot of the cast not everyone but for a lot of the cast they tend to be 11 frames or even a little slower right so quick 10 framer really nice basic poke if you do manage to get a counter hit with it, you get some decent damage. As it being a medium, you get some decent amount of counter hit slow time, like hit stop. And from there, if I see I get it, then just go into down heavy slash. It's a natural combo from that point. And then you can go into heavy slash Kabari. And there you go. So decent chunk of damage for a very low commitment, nothing normal. Now on the flip, if you're looking for a bit more range, you have crouch slash. So Crouch Slash is only a frame slower, 11 frames, so that's actually still really, really good in terms of the speed, but it does have some recovery. The reason it has some recovery is because, well, like, ranges, Stand Slash would totally whiff, disconnects. So if you're looking for distance over just raw speed, Crouch Slash is the way to go. Just make sure you space it correctly, because once again, it's a little bit of recovery, not a lot, but enough that you'll probably get whiff punished if uh, they're also just hitting buttons. So just keep that in mind. So that's some pokes, right? Stand slash, no slash. But counter pokes is stand heavy slash. It's slower yet. Uh, I do believe stand heavy slash is something like 13 frames of startup. Not the quickest move, although still not slow. But the big thing about this move is it has what we call a disjointed hitbox. So the part where you can hit Baikin is well behind the sword. For these other guys here, you can hit the weapons and it'll hit Baikin. This guy, you cannot. So if you're both just like kind of back and forth and just tossing out things, this is the one you want to do to catch them as you can still catch their limbs, but you yourself cannot get hit. And also the beauty, since it's a heavy slash, means it comes with the big boy counter. So like something like this, all well and good, respectable enough damage, but you can get a lot more here. And now you can see the damage is much more substantial. Now, you don't have to end the super. That's just for effect, I suppose. But yeah, you definitely get the maximum amount of reward poke-wise. And once again, just to really hammer home, destroying the hitbox, the part where Bike can be hit is Bike in herself, not the sword. And finally, for notable normals, Crouch Slash. Er. And finally, for notable normals, Crouch Heavy Slash. This guy hits from very far away, as you can see here. But the thing is, since it hits from so far away, it's pretty negative on block. So you want to be hitting from the absolute tip of the move. Otherwise, don't bother. A lot of characters' basic poke attacks, if you do not space it correctly, they will get you with it every single time. As this move is pretty negative on block. So the thing, which is the saving grace, is it has a fair bit of what we call active frames. So the move itself is out there for a while. So what you want to do is either hit with the absolute tip of the move or hit later into the move's frames. You do either one of these, then you get the block. And at, at like completely maximum ranges, a lot of times if you space it just right, they won't even be able to hit you back at all, right? So great move, hit slow too, so that's great. And on counter hit, oh man, you get a lot. And that's just an example from like absolute max range, right? The closer you are in, for this specific move, actually, the more damaging combos you get. But even from the furthest possible range, you still get some fun stuff. Jump S, just because it's really good for what it is, controls a lot of the screen. And if you happen to catch someone else in the air, the counter hit, it refloats them. So you can just very easily just air dash and just do whatever combo from there. Uh, it's actually quite free form, so just really good. Uh, I recommend it, I guess. Also, um, talking air-to-air -air stuff, 6P, the 6P herself is not bad. This is like anti-notable, I guess. Just unlike a lot of other characters, you don't get much from it. 
Uh, the best option usually is just delay the claw and go for the claw. If you do it right away, there's a lot of situations where it'll miss and you don't want that. So just do a slight delay and then you'll get it most of the time. All right, so now we're going to talk Yozansen and the inputs to get it low to the ground. Once again, this is going to be one of the core things of your entire mix-up game plan, right? Either Yozansen, which is an overhead, or a sweep, or a crouch kick, or whatever, doesn't really matter what it is, but, you know, overhead versus the low. And you don't want to just jump and do it, although, well, sometimes you do, and I guess that's why this section is what it is. So let's talk about it. So Yozansen, the motion is quarter circle forward, right? And you gotta be in the air and you do it and hit slash and there you go. The thing is the game very easily allows you to do the tiger knee technique. So what we do here is just enter our quarter circle forward as normal, right? And then just do it as you're gonna do it and then end it up forward. So if you did this normally without hitting any buttons, you would just basically super jump. And the thing is, the frame you're in the air and then you hit the button, you already did your motion, so the game counts that, and now you basically do the Yozansen as low to the ground as possible. Uh, if you input the button a little too late though, you'll get the jump slash instead. And that's really all there is to it. So once again, quarter circle forward, and then just hit up forward. So one motion. So down, down forward, forward, up forward, then hit slash. And you'll do this air move as low to the ground as possibly can. Now you can manually do it here, like jump and then hit uh, course of forward and slash. The thing is, as you can see, while I can still hit uh, Kai here, right? I'm not necessarily as low to the ground. So if you're doing this raw and you're trying to stop people from reacting to it, this is the better option of the two. The thing is, there are some cases when you want to do the jumping version without the special input instead. Uh, most notably when you're cancelling it from a normal. So uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the video, but once again, or if you just skipped ahead, moves that let you jump cancel, stuff like stand kicks, uh, stand close slash, where you can jump right after the move, right? This is a core of a lot of the mix, because say stand slash, I can either stand slash and go into a sweep, and then go into a combo, or I can do this, stand slash, then jump cancel it, and go into my Ozonson. So now it's an unseeable 50-50. Generally though, you will want like meter to roam and cancel to back it up, so you can get combos and make it safe, because it is not safe on block, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so the thing is, for combo potential, and some other stuff, but we'll start with combos first, the motion of jumping and then doing it is actually better than doing the tiger knee motion. Because the tiger knee motion creates a super jump, which means it uses some of your air mobility. So just to give an example. So I'll do this here, slash into the tiger knee Yozansen. That is a natural combo, by the way. And then I'll use my roam cancel combo out. So 184 damage, nothing to sneeze at, that's mildly substantial actually, right? And you had to guess, because if you guessed wrong, I went for low, well, tough, right? But if I do the other method where I jump, and then I enter it, I will not be super jumping, which means, after I'm airborne, I still have my double jump to work with, and we get a new combo that's, well, better. So this combo is 198 damage. Obviously not worlds more, but more damage is more damage for the same amount of resources. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, that combo is harder than the one that you saw earlier, right? But it goes to show, that combo was only possible because I did not use the Tiger Knee method. I jumped and then inputted it. So I didn't use the Tiger Knee, so I kept my super jump, I didn't use it, so it means I was able to double jump in the air, and because of the double jump, that combo was possible. So that is a scenario where you might want to do it. Now, that said, it's only a few more points of damage, so maybe the spike in difficulty is not for you. That said, it is a few more points of damage. So if you're looking to get optimal, and if you're willing to uh, put in the practice, 
then you can get a couple more points of damage in. Another thing to note about the differences between the two motions is if you're specifically going for like, you know, a normal into a jump cancel into Yozansen, the regular jump version gives you a little bit more frame advantage on hit than the Tiger Knee version does. Now, that all said, I really don't recommend going into Yozansen at all without Roman Cancel to back it up because it makes you safe on block and gives you the combos on hit. I really think you should wait till you get the meter to do it. That said, that is another difference. All things being said, though, the Tiger Knee motion is just so much easier. Um, and if you're doing it raw, I do recommend you doing it this version as doing it any other version is simply slower. You are less likely to do it as low to the ground as possible. But that is some of the things possible thanks to these techniques and just the differences between the two motions you might want to use. Now, let's go back to the mat. So we talked earlier in the basic move section how just, you know, it's really good for screen control and it's just all around one of her more important moves. Either screen control, combos, whatever. One thing about it though, however, is it crushes projectiles, as you can see here. Now, there is a small element of timing here though, because uh, if you wait too long, you'll just get bopped. The mat has to be in play, as it were. But that said, it's just a pretty decent tool in stopping all manner of projectiles, and it can stop more than single hit projectiles as well. It can stop multi-hitters. So here we are, Kai, big bad multi-hitter fireball, right? As far as Viking's concerned, eh, no bigs. So here's a big thing to note though. The grounded version, as you can see here, just it crushes it, no problem. And it works this case with many multi-hitting projectiles. But the air version, it'll take a single hit off it. Like if we just let it rock, right? See here, three hits. Uh, and if we stop it here and then get hit by it, two hits. So it'll take a single hit off it, but the air version is not as powerful as the grounded version in stopping multi-hitting projectiles. So, while it's good for the single hitters, if you're just jumping around and tossing mats, you know, for fun and for profit, just keep that in mind. It'll stop single hitters, but not the multi hitters. But if you got the big one coming your way, but if you got the big one coming your way, just black, and you can knock it out. Now, certain moves are a bit odd in this way. So, someone like Leo's giant multi hitting projectile, gone. Doesn't matter how many hits it is, it's crushed. Uh, just FYI, same deal with Eric and Tommy. You take a single hit, but not the rest. But as far as the grounded version goes, don't matter how many hits you got, just get out of my face, right? Certain moves with projectile properties, like the Sickle Flash for Axel, you saw right there, it said two hits. Normally, it's a three-hitting move. So in this case, you can stop one hit of it, but not all three hits of it. So it can be a little janky in what it considers uh, multi-hitting and what stops and it doesn't. So more traditional projectiles work just fine. Weird things like Axel's multi-hitting moves and uh, not so much, but still, now you know. So your basic air tatamis will destroy single hit projectiles. And for the most part, the ground tatami will destroy projectiles regardless of how many hits they have. So now let's get more in depth about the counter. As we mentioned before, it does a lot. It starts on frame one, gets highs, it gets mids, it gets lows. Uh, the damage itself is pretty respectable as well. It's good. Uh, so some of the things here, uh, one downside, I guess you could say, is distance. So we saw this move here, so countered it just fine. But the problem is if we counter it from a little further away, we don't get the same thing. So depending on where the move hits depends on how the counter works. So it can be a deflect from further out, but it has to be uh, much closer in to be the proper counter. So keep that in mind if you're just like looking to stop basic pokes and all that kind of stuff. While you might have a little bit of frame advantage, it's that's all it's going to be. Like a little bit of frame advantage from this far away in the end is pretty inconsequential. So save it for when the enemy is much closer to you. Distance is very important in situations like these. Say you want to punish Soul's Tyrant Raider Super, right? Like, pushes you out pretty decently, so, like, depending on where you are, you might not get the best punish. Like, from here, with the push out, like, I can get him with this, but that's, that's kind of whatever, right? So how about we get the counter, and maybe we'll burn a bar to RC after the fact, right? So there's definitely a gap here, so we'll counter the second hit. Oh. 
once again if you're at a minimum distance away uh you'll just get the pushback so our whole counter punish is ruined that sucks uh so sometimes in situations where you know there's a gap it's okay to take a tiny step forward then do it easier than you think too so just do the motion same as always and then instead of just doing the button immediately just wait one split second then hit the button so you'll just do corsicle forward walk forward a tiny step then do the counter just like that it's not much right even if it's just a pixel but in certain situations it can really help Another big thing is what it catches. So it only catches physical hits. No projectiles, fireballs, or throws, or whatever. But the thing is, some things count as physical hits you'd be surprised. Like, say, uh, Potemkin's Shield Super. So if you happen to be right beside Potemkin, you could throw him out of it, right? That's always one of the weaknesses of the move. Is if you see it, you can throw him out of it, but well, then you're roped to Potemkin, and maybe you don't want that, right? But turns out, you can counter it just the same. As you can see, I know it looks like a projectile super, and if it gets out there, like if it leaves him, you sure as shoot are not going <laughs> to counter it. But uh, at the very beginning, you absolutely can. If you mash your counter, because uh, it has a very short active frame window, you actually might miss. So just delay it a tiny little bit, and you'll get it. So just keep that in mind. Also... Garuda Impact. Garuda Impact is a counterable move. It looks like, you know, a fireball because, well, it's a giant ball of fire coming out of his arm, but you can totally counter it. As you can see there. So if he's doing that on your wake up, since it's slow enough, you can just absolutely react to it, right? If it's further away, yeah, it'll bounce off, which is whatever, right? But if he's any kind of close, you can just on reaction do it. Now, of course, if you're just sitting and waiting for it, yes, you can get it on reaction. Absolutely. But the problem with sitting and waiting around with Potemkin is you don't want to sit and wait too long, right? But still, it's an option available to you. Now, let's show you an option select. Uh, this is a style of option select that was actually patched out of the game in a way, but Baikin has it. So Baikin, obviously not for counter, frame one, right? And it dunks you. The thing is here, when you do your counter, and say you try to roam and cancel right away. Sure enough, right? No bigs. Uh, what was patched out was uh, this style of option select where you try to throw people and then go for a Roman cancel. So the idea was if you got your throw, you got it. And if you whiffed the throw for whatever reason, you were just safe with the Roman cancel, right? With the counter, you cannot Roman cancel it until the end of the move. So try as you might. It only comes out at the very end. Meaning, if you whiff and Roman cancel right away, you're safe but if you get the counter and then roam cancel right away well then nothing comes out so effectively you get the best of both worlds there's a lot of situations in this game is the person going to attack me when i'm waking up right and if they do and you counter that's fantastic that's great but what if they didn't and they baited it out well then you're a sitting duck and you're gonna get beat up real bad but thankfully in that situation, if you whiff, you just Roman cancel, and then everything's back to safety. So that is the option select. It's incredibly simple. Literally just counter and then hit Roman cancel. And you basically always get the better of the two options. Granted, a Roman cancel isn't cheap, you know, but it's better than getting your head beat in if you whiff the counter. So just a little option select to keep in mind. So now let's talk rope mix-ups, and we're gonna do this off the primary form of you getting the rope, and that is off the basic throw. In a lot of ways, Viking's almost a grappler because she wants to get that throw all the time. And as you saw here, Leo Bot, he's swinging for the fences as soon as he gets up, right? So Leo's tied for fastest possible reversal in the game, so I think he's a good example of this because we're gonna show you how to get a left-right mix-up that you can combo after and also be completely safe from people who just want to spam reversals on wake up like our old pal Leo here. So it's actually very simple. There's three aspects of it. The first two are the main one and the third one is if you just want to go a little bit further. So just do the throw. It doesn't really matter any direction. 
And as soon as you finish your throw, then what we want to do here is enter our input here for our Tammy or Matt, and then either hit up or up forward. And depending on which direction you hit, that's the direction you'll be on. If you go up, it'll be same side. If you go up forward, it'll be a cross up. So cross up example here. And there, easy peasy, right? Other side. Naturally enough, when I land, you do whatever combo follow-ups you want to do, right? And now if we do the same thing here, so the motion, then we just hit straight up and then hit kick. We're at the same side. If you have some difficulty with the, the same side version in that you kind of keep accidentally hitting up forward and getting the cross-up version, you can also just manually super jump and do it or just jump straight up. Kind of works the same way. Technically, the version where you super jump is overall the better one, but it's just an option available to you. And now the results. As you can see, did wake up reversal. And Leo's especially is good because it'll always auto correct in a lot of situations because it's a charge versus a motion. So we're just completely nice and safe. Get the block. Same side, same deal. You get to be completely safe. And this works any version of any jump you want to get, right? So super jump, regular jump, it's all good. You get to just land and block. So that's great. Now, one thing about it is technically, if you have like special eyes, you can notice the difference in that the cross up version before the rope yanks you in, you can see it moving forward a little bit. Realistically, it's incredibly difficult to perceive in an actual live fire match. But technically, it is something you could notice, right? So if you want to be all the way perfect, then what you want to do is this. The cross-up remains the same. That's the same as it's ever going to be. You do the same motion, right? So just down to forward, to up forward, and then you get a super jump installed version of the tatami. Now, if you want to keep moving forward and remain same side, what you want to do is just oh, jump forward. That's it. And then input the tatami basically as fast as you can. Do it correctly, you will remain same side, and you keep jumping forward, so then it's even more visually imperceptible. The timing's a little strict compared just to the regular version, but if you just want to be that extra stealth assassin about your cross-up, there you go. Any of the ways you want to do it, you get to block the reversals, and you still get the combo after the fact. So it all works out great. So that's the basic layer one version of the mix-up, and it's decently powerful enough you could just be happy enough with it and it'll work the reward off just getting a basic throw is pretty big but let's try another one so these mix-ups involve still the rope and the throw yes but jumping s and since it's jumping s and not the tatami it means your overall damage damage scaling will be a little bit better uh, it's a little trickier, so uh, heavier on the execution versus the much more simple mix-up before but still the rewards are there so what do we do? Well, it's pretty simple. So we're gonna do our super jump after a basic throw. But the thing is here, uh, versus the other ones where you just jump and do your thing immediately, wait one tiny split second. Uh, it's pretty natural, just don't do it instantly. And then do your super jump, and your super jump, you'll go over the enemy, and you turn over, because it's a super jump, and you clonk them on the head. And yes, just in case you're wondering, also totally safe to even the fastest of reversals. So you're good there too. So that's layer one, basically. Just, you know, bonk them, then do a combo if it hits. And you're safe from safe jumps, so hold back while you're doing it. Easy enough. So the mix comes from this. So when you do the super jump, you're jumping forward once again for the eagle eye people. You can definitely tell, oh, it's gonna be a cross up. Layer two is just holding regular forward. So either way, you're jumping forward, right? And the difference with the rope, especially between a regular jump forward and a super jump forward is very imperceptible, way more imperceptible than the other mix. And what we're going to do is this. So this one, you are going to hold forward jumping immediately. Don't wait that split second. So when you're throwing, you just literally can just hold up forward and have the jump come out as fast as possible. And then what we do here, right before you land, just backdash. And from that backdash, clonk them in the head. Right there. 
And you see, the rope brought you back together, right? So that means uh, some shenanigans can go down because the rope is going to keep you guys together. And specifically from there, we're going to do a delayed Yozansen. So don't do it immediately. If you do it immediately, it'll hit. That's fine. But we want a combo after, right? If you do a slight delay and get a little closer to the ground, you'll still be a natural combo. And then we can get proper follow-ups and damage and combos. And there you go. So basically at the last possible second when you would auto turn over and cross up and bonk them with jump S, you then just immediately backdash and hit jump S, delay the Ozonson, and you can do whatever combo. So it's pretty handy. And once again, too, keep in mind, the combos are different because you just threw them, so the ropes attach, so you can get extra fancy with it. So these are just two examples of the mix-up possible from the rope. This is off the basic throw. You're gonna get it all the time. So whichever one you prefer, that should be the one you work with. They're both really good. They're both able to safe jump reversal so you don't get clocked. Although the back dash one uh, against Leo specifically, it, you will lose. The uh, cross up will always be able to safe jump, but the uh, mix up same side version will not be able to. But just a heads up, I guess. But yeah, still very strong mix ups either way. Lots of pressure and the enemy's always gonna be having to guess, guess, guess. So let's talk some Yozansen mix-ups. So we already went over the basics, right? And the core 50-50. You have a lot of options to go low and any version of instant air Yozansen is the overhead. So that's the 50-50, that part's easy enough. We're not gonna cover that again. We're gonna talk more about trickier left-right examples. So let's give you a basic example. You may have already seen something like this before. That's the cross-up, right? And this is thanks very much to the rope. Uh, what we do here is we just do our throw. We kick him after the throw. Kick is jump cancelable. And then we jump and we air dash. And the air dash plus the extra momentum from the rope slingshot lets us get easy cross ups. Easy peasy. And the rope brings him in as well so we can do combos too. Just a decent example here, some workable damage. But the thing is, it doesn't always have to be a cross up. You can actually remain same side. So what's the difference there? It's pretty simple. It's just a matter of how you jump. So if you want to remain same side, all you have to do is in this scenario here after the throw and then you get the boot. Just jump and air dash as fast as you possibly can. Easy peasy. And if you jump and then air dash and just delay the air dash like just even a couple frames, then it will always be a cross up. At which point the rope momentum is kicking in and slingshotting you, giving you a lot more ability to cover the air than the regular jump does. So basically, it's playing with the rope or playing against the rope that gives you a little bit of a left-right cross-up. Another example of some fun gimmicks is in the corner. Now, normally, in this game, if someone's in the corner, you can in no way cross them up. You know, being in the corner sucks bad already as it is, right? So you can't left-right them in the corner. You can get all sorts of mix and pressure, but you can't hit them with the old left-right mix-up. Thanks to the old rope, though, that's not the case. Due to the, how the rope works with the physics, say I backdash here. When it tries to bring us back together, well, now that corner is accessible. So we can get some Yuzansen mix ups here. So, layer one, very basic, but works. There you go. So we toss him in the corner, backdash to get the pull, and then just charge in and go bonkers. And once again, here, too, the rope is attached, so we can get Yuzansen specific rope combos. Now, what makes this a mix-up is the point right before you do the air dash, you don't have to air dash. In fact, you can just back dash in the air again. And this is basically the crux. So here, we can now get combos like that. So if they anticipate the air dash into the Zonson immediately, you can just stay same side and clonk them in the head with jump S. And from there, you go jump S into the Zonson and do combos from there, and we've highlighted a few of those earlier in the video. Or you can just go in the dust as well. 
the dust looks a lot cooler, but it's uh, not as easy to get the combos. So if you're just looking for combos and pressure, stand or rather jump S into Yozansen is the way to go on that front. I guess a lot of this video is just highlighting a lot of stuff with the rope because it's a really, really big deal. This is the defining aspect of this character now for sure. So you gotta make the most of it. And that's a lot about Biken, and I'm sure there's a lot more I didn't cover, just there's a lot to discover with this character. So she's definitely changed compared to previous incarnations of the character over the years, but it's not a bad change. It's uh, kind of a fun one, actually. I myself, I do miss some of the more defensive aspects of the character, a lot with uh, the crazier counters and all, but she got fun stuff to make up for. Uh, the, the rope, the silly string, whatever you want to call it, this is the key among them, as this is the absolute defining aspect of the character. In the end, I believe her to be a character you kind of have to respect for the most part neutral. Uh, I do think she'll struggle against some of the characters with bigger buttons, as, you know, you got some nice range here, but against Axel, well, that's not exactly much, right? But for the people who outrange you, well, that's what this is for, right? Axel doesn't exactly get to go too far away when the rope and the tether is up. I appreciate her overall fairly solid buttons, fairly solid neutral, and her just general aggression. So this version of Biken I feel will be much more popular with the masses as a whole versus like the weird defensive character she was before. I liked it, sure, but that didn't exactly have mainstream appeal. And the problem with Biken is she's a character her design brings in mainstream appeal, but then you get to the gameplay and people kind of bounce off. So now with the good buttons, uh, just the easiest 50-50s in the world, all the pressure and gimmicks from the rope, I hope Biken is now the character that will get that average player in and stay to keep playing the character versus being scared off. So overall, just as a character as a whole, Biken definitely gets a thumbs up from me. I was very worried about the change of how the character worked originally, but overall I feel like they pulled it off. So mission success on that. And that'll said my friends, well, it's the end of the video. If you could spare a like, that would be sincerely appreciated. These kind of videos take forever and a day to make. I would love that. But otherwise, since we're at the end, well, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Guilty Gear.